Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl in that. And it's your boy, mm. Stanley. Can y'all believe we're here? Like, we're we here. Like, we're reunion, boy. We made it to the reunion of yeah. Love and Marriage Huntsville. I will say that this season got on our nerves, but not to a point where we were like, I'm quitting after this one. Right. Because y'all know that we have quit this show, mm -hmm. and y'all were not having it. Maybe, maybe I'm just changing. Maybe I'm just changing. Maybe I'm just learning to accept it all. But let's go ahead and get into the befores of the reunion, right? So we start off where we see everybody coming in and whatever, and it's been two years since they've had a reunion. That's crazy. It's just mind-blowing to me that yeah, a disease came through and yeah, locked us yeah. away for this like, long. Because like like 20, but it's like, yeah. 24 months. months. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, it really has been that long? Mm -hmm. But it has been. So they're getting together and no one in the <clears throat> cast knows that Carlos King is going to be the host for the reunion. So he shows up and he lets everybody know like, hey, <laughs> surprise, I'm going to be the uh, host. I'm the host. With the most. And all of them were like, <laughs> because I think the only one that said wasn't scared was Kimmy. Kimmy said, yeah. I ain't scared. Yeah, because if you live in your truth and you live you live and you walk the same way, there's nothing that you can right, battle me with. Right. You know exactly, what I mean? Exactly. So for me, I love the fact that Carlos King is the host because like they said, he knows where the bones are buried. Yep. He knows where to dig them up. And he knows all the answers to all the questions that he's going to ask. So if you try to spin a question, he all he's going to do is spin the block twice. Yep, exactly. And bring the answer <laughs> and the question back to you because he know it before you know, before you know. Yep. So I said, perfect, perfect. And it's also perfect because sometimes the cast will try a host mm -hmm. because there's no emotional connection to the host because after the gig is done they go on about their business but they are emotionally attached and professionally attached to carlos king right. so they're not gonna get out of pocket when he asks the hard questions so now that we've set the stage <laughs> <laughs> carlos came all the uh -huh, way in. So let the shenanigans begin, bro. Yeah. Anyway. So we know that a lot of the questions were um, suggested questions that came from social media, the audience, and fans like ourselves and whatnot. But Carlos also had his own goddamn questions. Yep. So the first thing that we want to talk about is, like like uh, Funky Daddy would say, the fashions. We're not talking about the fashions. But I would say Kimmy looked the best to me. She looked all together, it was perfect. Mel, as far as the face and the hair, Mel was the best in that. The dress I couldn't really get with. Tisha's dress, if she had a different hairstyle, I could see her being the one to be able to pull that off because she can pull off those retro styles, but the hair was a no-go. The makeup was a no-go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the hair and the makeup was a no-go. I think that's what I said. Um, my mind is going real fast today. <laughs> but anyway, so let's go ahead and get in. You know, the men always basically look nice. You know, Martel is always going to come with the, I, with I was, the mediums. Because I agree to say the fellas, we don't care what the yeah, fellas they don't got care. on. Yeah, we don't care nothing about that. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Martel came with the mediums. We already knew. Carlos Even came. Carlos, yeah. Carlos, Carlos said, don't bust don't, your stuff. Don't, don't, don't split your pants down. <laughs> Why you trying to sit down? <laughs> so let's see. Let's talk about some of the things that we learned that I don't. I'm one of those people that I have my ear to the streets, but not so much so that I know when people drop off social media or when they following people and unfollowing people. Right. I don't have that kind of time. But what I did learn is that Tisha had to get off of Twitter because Twitter became such a negative space for her that it was starting to bother, bother her, her negatively. Yeah. And affect her negatively. And that was one of the things that Carlos said that he gave all of them as a suggestion when they st first started the show was don't, don't read, read, read the comments. comments. Because people are horrible. Like people yeah. can say the meanest mm -hmm. and the most cruel yep. things about you because there's no repercussions for them doing so. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got now it. we all have our, you know, we all have our mm. commentary, we all have our opinions. But I hope, and this is my hope and my prayer for us, for our channel, is that we've always been fair. And right. we don't hit below the belt 
per se to a point where we feel like we're going to drive somebody over the edge or we're going to affect them negatively because at the end of the day, we're behind a camera as well. You know and they're and they, and they real people and with they're real, real lives. People with, yeah. yeah, and with real lives. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to dish something that karma is just going to come back and spin the block twice right. and hit me with that. You know exactly. what I mean? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like you said, we're all people doing what we need to do for the end goal at the end. It's financial stability just to be a good human being. Yeah. <laughs> And, 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 and spread the good energy in the yeah, world. Yeah, spread good energy. So I hope that's what we put out there for our channel. Right. Because I've seen other like commentary. I'm in groups and I'm like, well, they light into it more. They light kill into... them. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know we say our stuff too, but I mean they digging into you know the head yeah. and then I'm like, oh my god. And, and then another reason why we be careful too because we understand that editors can make. The character be what they want them to be. That's true. And so when you start really digging into people based upon what you see in editing, you kind of got to be careful of what you say on that too. That's true. Which they're probably going to spin you spin you into uh, about when Carlos was talking about people were saying that the show started one way. And then it got changed. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you're going that direction. I yet. could. I can't go that way. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, um, one thing that we did learn was... That Marceau was not happy with the, the producers yeah. changing the title to Love and Marriage Huntsville because he foresaw that this would be turned it from its original intent to something that was going to be all about their marital issues, whether they are some, none, whatever. So he wasn't feeling that at all. So Same. the question... I also thought this was going to be a flip or flop show. Yeah. A construction show. <laughs> and, um, and la, 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 I missed my train of thought. Marcel. But, um, yeah, so my, Marcel was like, I, this is not what we signed up for. So then Carlos was like, you know, how do y'all feel about people saying that, you know, we came into it looking for one thing and we ended up with something else. Mm -hmm. And that's us. Like, we legit came into it looking for these power couples that were making this great yeah. impact on their community by this flipping land, yeah, taking land, rebuilding it, yeah. and and handing it over to people in their community that could actually afford to stay there. Right. You know, not flipping it and giving it to a big developer like Ryan Holmes, right. and they push you out of your own neighborhoods. I was excited about things like that. But Maurice had to drive it back home for us, and I hope that we have been fair with that too. Right. Is that although it changed, it changed. We hope that we've shown you all progression. Right. And through the years, everything that we've said that we were going to do, we did, did do it. it. Yeah. They, and I'm like, yeah. some of it, because we ain't seen <laughs> the development of the land yeah, yet. yet. <laughs> but like he said, he was like, you saw me going through law school. You saw right. me become a lawyer. You right. saw Tisha in school <clears throat> right. to get her second BA. Then she ended up getting the second BA. So right. you saw Kimmy progress, then ended up, you know, leaving her job, job. to start flipping homes. And you saw Marceau. They wanted to build black, oh, black. and different things that. like that and yep. develop. They are all doing those things. So it's not like they're not doing those They are things. still being successful, making successful moves. But the drama kind of like... Overshadows that. Yeah, overshadowed it. Because, like, you know, that's that's one thing we talked about was, like, that that change, which I expected for it to be some drama because anytime you're working with a group of people, there's always going to be some conflict Real involved. Much. Everybody's not going to see eye to eye, so I understood that. But I was like, how did we get from, you know, 47 acres in the mule to the whole cheating, and cheating in marriages? I, I'm, I, that's, that was like... And that being yeah. the forethought. <laughs> and that being the thing of the whole entire show. Yeah. Yeah. Even this reunion. <laughs> but however, we did see the success. Oh yeah, we yeah, did. So we did. We did. Yeah. So kudos to y'all. Yeah, y'all yeah, really did shake and move. Right. So let's get ahead, go on and talk about um Carlos King asked Mel and Martell, listen, you all came to us as a married couple. All of the other stuff that had already happened had already happened because everybody thought that Carlos King brought them together and made to, all of and it made up. all this stuff up. And he was like, let's set the record straight. 
Y'all came to me, pitched this idea as a married couple about this show, and then it just took on a life of its own. So do you regret doing this show? Not Mel. She Mel said, <laughs> nope. no, she doesn't regret doing the show because I agree. She said the show has opened doors, doors yeah. for her that would have taken a lot longer yes, yes. for her to walk through. So for that, she's forever grateful because the, the show gave her a platform to be able to, mm -hmm. one, get a fan base, right. and then two, be able to step into doors that usually will probably be locked or very hard to get into. Yeah. But because you've made yourself open to the world, then you're open to, you know, you have access to, to other doors. Right. In case in point, um, freaking launching a clothing line, that takes a while it to, to build. And then also writing a book mm -hmm. and getting people to buy your new book. So, yeah, this was a perfect platform for both the of song. those. The song. Yeah, like so, the song, yeah. Like the best Martel said, that BS song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so she was 100% right about that. She was. And like I said in the um, last review, Ride that train until you cannot yeah, ride that train. Right, ride that anymore. momentum while it's hot. So here's Spike come, while the iron is hot. <laughs> so here come Marta, you know. Um nice. I do regret the I show. Do. I do regret the show. He said, you know, at the end of the day, I did what I did, but I believe that the show put a whole lot of emphasis on the things and Mel couldn't stay out the comments and I kept telling her because she loves the comments. You that, did too, bro. <laughs> that she would read everything that everybody would say, and then she would be like, this person say this, and this person say that. And I was like, stay out the comments. So he was like, I really felt like it had a really big burden on our marriage that we were trying to work on. So you, yo, yo, damn lady, leaving the house didn't have no bearings. Yeah, on all on of On all of this? this? Yeah. Like, like <laughs> make this make sense. And then they started talking about, um, you know, because he was like, you know, I made a lot of sacrifices for Mel and, you know, she wanted to be the one on TV and I did that for, for her. her and everything that's coming into fruition now is kind of benefiting her because this is the platform that I supported so that she can be who she is now. So Carlos is like, so are you trying to say she's who she is because of you? And even Mel said... He did what a supportive husband, husband is, is supposed to, to do. do. Now, here's the thing. That is what you're supposed to right. do. When you're in a partnership and your partner wants to do something that maybe you, you just ain't feeling, you support. But right. while you're supporting, you don't go out there and create chaos. Yeah. So that once the dust settles, you all can just go. Just yeah, so y'all gonna be eating that. the fruits of that of all that sacrifice and labor, but yet but he was y'all got a different. Else. You got some fruits so of your lawn came into the picture, red. Hello. <laughs> so I was like, here we go with this <laughs> with but, Martel. But Carlos did. I asked him the good question right in the middle. Of all that was like, so do y'all think if it had not been for the show that y'all would still be married? And Martel said he think that he they, think they would. would. And Mel said, no. I don't know what to believe. Yeah. It's a twofold answer for me. I think that if the baby had never came into play and Martel continued to do what Martel did, I still think that Mel would still be there. I really do. I think the eyes and the chatter was a lot for yeah, someone. Yeah, on top of it, yeah. Yeah, for someone to... Staying. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you didn't have all of that, you know, what's that sh what's that movie where it says it's one thing for for us to know that you're failing English. <laughs> oh, Coach Carter. <laughs> yeah, Coach Carter. But the world oh, no, knows that you're yeah, failing. Yeah. No math. The world knows. So I think that that had a lot of bearing on it. But if they if he had had a baby on her and they were not on this show, I don't know. I Cause that changed the game for me. Right, I I would say um, definitely being on the show added to her really letting him go. I think if they wasn't on the show and it was all private and they was working it out and he actually really changed and stopped going to see the girl, I think oh, yeah, that, that I think I think, would, I think would have been a very good high percentage. Yeah, uh, that he that they would still be married right now. Yeah. So, we get to the point where, <laughs> <laughs> we, 
we get right into, well, let's talk about Kimmy, Maurice, Kiowa, and that whole situation first. I hope after this, we never, ever hear hey, about, about Kimmy being, the side, Kimmy chick, being the side chick again. Because it's, it's at this point, no one cares. Right. At this point, they are married. They are building together. Kiowa <laughs> is married. Like, why are we still here? And like I told you, I told my wife off camera, I said, I think that's the problem with the world today is that we feel we have this uh, this right to tell people how they should ought to live and judge them based upon the decisions they made. So if Kimmy decided to be the side chick, that ain't got nothing to do with us. That's that's on them. That's, that's what they have. <laughs> yeah, so long as, you know, that ain't, you know, having anything to do with me. So... I Making a big deal about it is like I, I just never I ain't yeah. losing no shuffles over right, it. Right, right. <laughs> you know? So it really don't matter. But I never believed that she was based upon her you know her character and which and what she displayed on the show. I don't think she would have um, brought herself down to be a side chat. Yeah. So not saying that you know anything wrong with being a side. So you, I you mean, know, it they is. made a whole song <laughs> about it. You know, I left, <laughs> I left home. home to be with my side piece. Yeah. So they oh, made a whole something song. wrong with it. I mean, it is something wrong with it, but if you think if if you want to be a part of if it, if that's your mental if, compass, if, I mean, if that floats your boat, I don't got nothing to do with float, that. Float, float on, on. <laughs> yeah, float on. So they they read the room. They was like, everybody at the end of the day was like, I didn't believe that Kimmy was no side chick, but nah. you know they got the Tisha. And Tisha was like, I didn't believe it, but this is what Kaya was saying. Maurice had to break it down without making Kiowa sound horrible. The reason that our marriage failed was because of her. And he's been saying that though. Yeah, and he was like, without saying, but saying, without saying, she put the nail in the coffin. So anything that happened after that, one, she shouldn't even be concerned about, but two, I have receipts to prove that all of this was deaded before me and Kimmy even met. Yeah. So that's not even a thing. And then they say it was boiled down to that after the divorce, it was that six month period. Yeah, but you have to wait or something. Yeah, yeah, so it was like during that period, I guess because they were together, that it was no way they could reconcile the marriage. Yeah. But at that point, once the paper signed, then he was like, done. I done moved out yeah, and all this stuff. Done so, <laughs> so Carlos was like, So you weren't even intimate with your wife? And I'm like, That question came from somewhere because I was like, That was like a pulled out question. And he was like, Impossible. Like, it's impossible for me to be an alien. <laughs> you know, <laughs> impossible. So, Kimmy, they asked, you know, the questions, you know, how is the relationship between you three now? You, Kiowa, Maurice, and everybody said that it's good. Like, good. it's a work in progress. Right. Um, They mm-hmm. made great strides to be on a level playing field because they have one thing in common. Monster. Monster. So yeah. they have to be a stable, united front for that for the son. But she said, I knew that these questions were going to come up in this reunion. So I gave Kaya Will a, a call, call yeah. because I don't want it to come back up, prick her ears, and have her And then it starts read, all over again, and we, yeah. And we go backwards with yeah. all the growth that we've come through. Right. <laughs> and I said, that's why I like Kim. Uh-huh. Grown. Yep. Grown people handling yeah. business the grown way. Right. You know, so hopefully that worked. Hopefully. <laughs> because it wasn't anything bad, in nah. my opinion. Nothing nah. bad um, was, was spoken of, whatever. <clears throat> so then we get on how, and we've heard this story before, so I don't understand why we're talking about it at the reunion. But we got on to Martel and the side chick and how Mel first discovered that this thing was going on between him and Arion. So Mel had told the story before. They were sitting at the house and the phone rang and it rang several times. So she answered Martel's phone. Arion's on the other end. was like, I didn't call you. I called Martel, put Martel on the phone. So this led to... Y'all saw they were trying to, like, make it believe, like, Marceau and Mel was having something going on. But what had happened was, y'all know that Mar- um, the Mel, these M's got yeah. done. <laughs> Mel's mother, Miss Val, Miss Van. Van. Van, Vanessa. Van. 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 Yeah. I keep calling her Val because I know too many Vals. Miss <laughs> um, Van used to work at Shoal. So she knew how tight that entire group was. I mean, it's almost like growing up with your friends and 
everybody's mama know that if anything was to go down, I need to call that friend and reel that exactly. one in. I need to do that. So what happened was... It seemed like I'm also always the one getting called, though. But he the biggest A, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually that. Me. Um, so when Mel and Martel got into it at the house, over said thing that just happened with the phone call from Arion because this is the first time she had ever realized that her husband was having an affair. Everything was at a peak. So Mel's mom called Marceau to check the situation. Yeah, come and, yeah, the so yeah. Marceau is calling Martel. <clears throat> Marceau is calling Mel. Where are you? I need to get y'all separated. I need to. Doing what a friend does is that I need to make sure that y'all are not in a place where y'all are in each yeah. other's face right now. So he asked her where she was and come find out she was near Chick-fil-A. He said, pull over. I'll meet you. You meet me. You know, maybe we need to pull up and have some drinks, de-escalate, regroup, get this thing together. Martel spun that thing to make it seem like he invited Mel out for, for drinks, drinks. Yeah. So that he could ease her and ease her mind, ease her tension to maybe have bad intentions. Yeah. And then... Tisha is over there looking like maybe she's starting to believe some right. of this. And that's one thing that we can say is that Tisha lets it be known where her insecurities lie and people play on it. Yeah. Because even if that was rattling you, be Just cool. sit there, yeah. Just, mm -mm. Yeah. But she's like, so you invited her out for drinks? And Marcel was like, listen, I'm a drinker. I invite the construction workers out for drinks. drinks. It don't mean, it's not like that. Like, it's yeah. not that I'm trying to woo anybody. It's I'm my way of like, it's my way out of situation. Comfort. Yeah, smoothing out of situation. So he yeah. was like, maybe Martel coming from a person that don't really drink like that, maybe he's thinking that I'm trying to, you know, push up on his wife. And he's like, no, I'm trying to help y'all save y'all marriage right. right now. <laughs> so then this is when Mel jumped in and she was like, Martel already knows. Because Martel was trying to make it seem like he caught Marceau agreeing to what he was saying because Marceau apologized. Marceau said, that's not what I apologize uh -huh. for. I apologize for the fact that maybe you saw it as something different than what it was, but it wasn't. Right. So, And then Mel was like, Marceau ain't never tried to come up on me like that. He never touched me in the wrong way. He was being never a great said, friend. Yeah, right. I don't even know it. When Which we he, already knew. Yeah. We already knew that. So he made all that BS up for, <laughs> but when Mar Mar Marceau said, I know it's a lie because Martel said, I said it. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. said, what do you mean? He said, I everybody knows it's a lie because you said, I said it. But like we talk about the whole time, the reason why Martel thought that was because he was cheating mm -hmm. and che that's what cheaters do. That's what cheaters do. So. Now, Carlos is still talking about, you know, so the United Front that the Holtz always have, it was bad to see it come to an end, but what was, what was the nail in the coffin for y'all? Because I told y'all, when Mel and Martel are on the same page, they are the same person. Right. Don't get it twisted. <clears throat> y'all saw it in that last reunion where they basically cornered themselves into a corner to themselves and was like... It's us against everybody. It's Team Holt. It's Team Holt until the day we die. That's how they roll. Yep. But then when they on the outs with everybody, it's them against each other. It's yep. the same energy. Trust. Yep. <laughs> they just as petty. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Like, you know, but Martel is the the most wrong in most of it. But they the same people. So here we are. Mel gets someone, and she was like, listen. I had just had, you know, we we gone through everything. Y'all saw everything on on big screen. I had my baby Milani. We're trying to work it out. We're doing everything. We're locked in the house. Pandemic came through. Took the kids out of school. Like we're doing everything that a family can do. You know, we're locked in this house together. And she said, all of a sudden, Martell is leaving the house in the middle of the pandemic. And me and my husband looked at each other. Was at a time. We looked at each other. Was like. 
We remember when the pandemic first hit. Yeah, and I just remember how scared. scared. Well, I mean, we was like so scared. We didn't even want them to deliver groceries here. We out there we spraying didn't. Lysol. And letting them sit outside. Yeah, and all that stuff. Wiping like, your yeah. groceries down. Yeah, well, yeah. So We're not letting people in our house. We're not really going out. And you leave it in the middle of that? With a newborn baby. Yeah, that you could bring that back to. Oh yeah, you definitely was, you definitely was in love with that girl. I don't, so, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Carlos was like, "Where were you going?" He was like, "I'm going to the gym." Carlos, so, oh, that gym. was shut down. Everything was shut down. Not my gym. Not my gym. Like what? Everything was shut down. He said so. Something else was open, wasn't it? So he kind of chuckled it all because we already know. Yeah. So we're not gonna keep spinning everything that happened in there because y'all saw it. But at the end of the day, Carlos had to ask Martel. The hard question. Yeah. <laughs> and I felt bad. I was like, hey, this is hard to hear. But but let before that, let's get into what Mel had to say. What was the nail in the coffin for you to say that this marriage is over? She said she remember one time in the house and she asked Mar she said that Martel kept telling her, You're gonna have to get used to me being the way that I am. Mm -hmm. And going to have to get used to me cheating. Yeah. She said no and said that you need to sit down and talk to the older lady. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that BS right there. <laughs> and she said, no, maybe you need to go sit down and talk to the okay. older men. Yeah. And he said, I have. So what did they tell you? Don't mess with nobody that don't have nothing to lose. Make them sign agreements. agreements. Yep. So she said at that moment, she realized he wasn't going to stop. He was just going to be a better cheater. cheater. Yep. And she said at that moment, she knew that she had to go ahead and file for divorce. She said it wasn't because of the baby. She said the baby wasn't even a thing yet. But she said it was for that reason right there. That's when she started. I don't know if I believe it, but if that's what she said, like they said on power, if they, if whatever she said that she did, she did that skill. Because <laughs> that's all I got to believe. Yeah. So... So then Carlos said that I'm going to make sure I bring up everything before I, I leave it like that because really that yeah, was the I know you want to get that ultimate question. Yeah, I want to yeah. get that ultimate question. So Carlos said, so Martel, hmm. do you think that you're like a sex addict or something? like?" Because Martel said, you know what? In a way, I feel bad for somebody like Martel because I really do think that it's something that here needs to be fixed. Um, and I'm not going to diagnose him with a mental disorder or nothing like that. Although I think. <laughs> um, he said, I've been to church and I've tried to get they, it prayed oh, off of me. And, lay hands on me. And, you know, he was like, I don't want to be. And whenever I hear somebody say they don't want to be something, but they ultimately are. It, I do have a soft spot for that because that's a stronghold mm -hmm. that they they don't know what to do with. And most people don't know what to do with it. And you don't know. It's almost like going to, to find a specialist that deals with my fingernail hurts just right here. Right. Oh, I'm a finger doctor, but my <clears throat> fingernail hurts just right here. They don't know. So you try to find that person that can help you or try to make you figure out why you're the way that you are and you're, you're missing. But in the same time, you're still being that person. And yeah. you're still in the habit and you're still bucking your life up. And he was like, <sighs> "Will you get ready to say?" <laughs> yeah, I I get it, but here's the thing, and this and this is to all of us accountability. All of us, if you really want to stop doing something, you can. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. That's true. That was my next point. Yeah, you can. But we we got that thing that we can say that I don't want this thing. And it's hard for me to let it go, which I believe that is true. But if you really want to let it go, you, you will do what you need to do or find out how to let it go. Touche. Yeah. So, Carlos said, and, and going to church, getting hands laid on is not enough. It's not enough. Especially when it's deep rooted, like what he got. Yeah, because you yeah. still have to put in the work. You like I y'all will say, you, yes. it's time for you to do your work. <laughs> yeah, well, she went to counseling and all that that, that that stuff too. But however, yeah. So Carlos said, "Listen, 
I'm just going to hit you with it. He was like, you were leaving your home in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. To go see someone outside of your home when you have your whole world yeah. in your home right there. And he was like, people been calling this girl a, a, a side piece, um, a side dish, coleslaw. And you, and you call her peasant. peasant. He said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Evidently, she's the entire restaurant. Because yeah, the you whole leave meal, the dessert. everything to go and mess with her. Yep. And he said... Is it because of your own insecurities? Is it, I mean, what is going on with you? Because he's like, I've never seen nothing. <laughs> In so many words, I've never seen nothing like this. He said, is the attachment to her sexual or is it that you in love? Or are you in, in love. love with her? Like, do you like being with her? I and, thought it was sexual at first. I and, knew it wasn't. Until now. Until when I he didn't. said he was, because I had no idea. That he was going out to see her during the pandemic. I, had- I knew it wasn't just sex season one. Because season one is when all of this came up. And the men was checking him. Remember they were playing football or oh, something yeah, like that? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. And he told that's right, them. That's right, they need to get rid of their second phone. He, they, they need, yep. Right. And he introduced this female as his, his girl, girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah. Men right, don't you introduce did. side pieces as their girlfriends, girlfriends right. to their close friends. Nah, Matter of I fact, mean. they would call them their, their sneaky link or something like that. But he was like, that's my girlfriend. I already knew right then and there he had feelings for her. Y'all lit us up season one when I said it. I said, listen to the language mm. that he's using towards her. The language didn't change towards her but, until later on. But it did was still for me about the pandemic. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I, I couldn't see myself during a pandemic leaving the house and go see nobody. We didn't even go see, you, I, your yeah. mama was a long time. Right. So I'm like, yeah, you got to be in love, 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 love. That would have been like if I had got stuck down in my mama house and they said we couldn't go to one for the pandemic. Oh, hell no. I'm coming back up here with you. Well, that's what Martel did. Yeah, that's what he did. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah. He was sneaking back and forth. And, you know, Carlos was like, so this was the time frame that, you know, she became pregnant. He wanted to dance around all of that because he knew that he was getting caught up in his own life. So, Carlos said, when's your son's birthday? Uh, 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 We're we're, we're not going to talk about that. And yep. da, 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 da. Cause that would give us time frame. We could we could work the math then. Yeah, but we. <laughs> I said you got everything else in your phone. <laughs> yeah. But he always said he got all his recordings, but he never played nothing. He, yeah, you never. Speaking of, yeah, never I put the evidence out phone. there, man. Listen, I had to do all my notes on my phone. Forgive me. I almost forgot one vital part. So then we started talking about he don't spent it around on male cheating on him once again. At this point, we don't care if Mel cheated on you or not. If she did cheat on you, it was well-deserved, in my opinion. I don't believe in tit-for-tat, but if she did cheat, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but what happened was she said that that was during the time where they, before the show, yeah, that they were separated and she was dealing with somebody for about a month. And he was saying that she gave him mm-hmm. head and he was like, no, and then Mel was like, no, I didn't mm-hmm. give him head. He, he gave, gave me, me some, head. but I but but I don't remember giving him. I said, hold on, wait a minute. I don't remember giving him none. And he said, hold on, hold on. I got it in my phone as a recording right here. Yeah. So I was then, like, play it. So that's when Mel's tone started to change. She said, well, maybe I did. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, you yeah you remember when you had a yeah in your mouth. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you remember that. <laughs> We've been married 19 years, and yeah, I know I, everyone. <laughs> I was like, and even Carlos said that you remember if you had if you had a thing in your mouth. You remember that. And she was like, well, because he keeps saying that he got this and that, you know, I'm just going to say I don't know. I don't remember. At the end of the day, Mel, it don't matter. We still say that you still right in this because Look, he's so wrong that we say you right. I can't say 100% that Mel did this, but I only go, I don't go, care. I'm going to say hypothetically based upon other people I've known who have been hurt by cheating and they get with somebody else. And it's much more than, than fellatio. It's, 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 because pull up it's, it's, it's revenge time. Yeah. You cheated on me. So now I'm going to cheat on you. And I'm doing it hardcore. Right. Boom. Boom. So that's where we at with that. 
Oh, you you oh you forgot the 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 last question that Carlos King asked. Oh no, I ain't, with the I ain't know. Oh, I thought you graded. Oh, oh right. no. wait a minute. Oh, I no, you were... I was leaving that for the end, oh, like okay, they did okay. us, like they did us. Yeah. Carlos said, "Hey, Montel, let me ask you this question right here." Hmm. He said, "Because everything that you're saying to me and everything that you have done on this show, when it comes to your marriage <clears throat> and how you moved throughout this whole thing in the pandemic, you leaving the house." This lady now has a baby. If you had a met this lady before you met Mel, would there have been a Mel and Martell? Hmm. And he was. Now, here's my thing. This is my answer. Not saying I'm right. Not saying I'm wrong. I'm saying that the answer is yes. There would not be a Mel. But I am going to say that he's probably going to answer it yes to hurt Mel. Hmm. But I still so? think the answer was probably going to be yes. You think so? There is something about her that, and really I think they're on the same mental playing field if you ask me. If you've, av if you've ever watched her on social media, you will get why they are attracted to each other. Hmm. You really will. Like they have that same... <laughs> thing going on. So I can definitely see their energies matching. And yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 it's, I it's so hypothetical though. It you, really is hypothetical. Because you just, you don't know. But would Martel be Martel Holt with Arion? I don't think so. Now, if you were asked, if the question was asked this way, if you met Mel, and Arion at the same time. Who would you would have chosen? Who you would have chosen. That would have been a better question. Right there. And on <clears> that <throat> note, we're going to see y'all next week. Straight from the VA. The Dirty Dirty South. Two up. Two down. Holla boo.